Hey, welcome back to Mellow Labs. On today's episode, we're taking a look at DF Robot's brand new ESP32 S3 AI camera module. Is it any good? Let's find out after this message from my sponsor. JLC PCB. With 19 years of experience and five state-of-the-art factories, it's no wonder that over 5.4 million engineers across 180 plus countries rely on their reliable and affordable services. Getting started is easy. Simply upload your Gerber files, get an instant quote, and place your order within minutes. It's just that easy. Whether you're prototyping or producing in volume, JLC PCB offers unbeatable pricing, with one to eight layer PCBs starting from just $2. But it's not just affordability, JLC PCB delivers premium quality with lightning turnaround times. Your boards can be ready within as little as 24 hours. All thanks to their fully in-house production process, which ensures quality control at every stage. And right now, there's an exclusive offer where you can get six layer PCBs for just $5 with $30 off of your first order. If you're ready to take your electronic projects to the next level, visit JLC PCB. When I first saw this camera module, I was pretty excited because it comes with some nice features built right in. It has a wide angle camera lens, IR LEDs for night vision, a built in microphone, a built in speaker, and an SD card slot. And on top of that, it can accept a voltage input from five to 12 volts. So you can run this off of any old random power supply or battery bank. Unfortunately, my excitement was pretty short-lived. See, when I first saw this, I thought this would be perfect for a DIY ring doorbell camera thing because it has all the features, the wide angle camera, the night vision, the microphone, the speaker. It would be perfect if it could do all those things at the same time, which, spoiler alert, it unfortunately can't. But um, before we get to that, let's play around with it and see what it actually can do. And let's compare it to this uh, pretty regular ESP32 camera module. Let's start with a hardware comparison. The first thing you'll notice is that they use the same exact camera lens module thing, which is great because you can actually go and buy uh, third party ones. For example, you can get telephoto, wide angle and stuff like that. I actually have a, a non wide angle lens here, which I actually very much prefer compared to the uh, wide angle. I really don't like the wide angle. They don't make an image look good. So uh, luckily swapping these out is as easy as just uh, unplugging this one and putting this one in. You don't even have to mess around with configurations or anything like that. Just take it out, put it in. Perfect. The next thing you'll probably notice is the LEDs. So the DF Robot one has four IR LEDs, which you can't actually see when they're on which does make troubleshooting a little bit annoying compared to this one's one bright white LED, which is very bright and it gets extremely hot if you leave it on for too long. So it will burn away. So just make sure not to leave it on. The last thing these two have in common is the SD card slot. Now DF Robot went for this very uh, low profile SD card slot that you just kind of slide your uh, SD card slot in here. I don't actually like these like at all, the, especially if you put this into a design where you need to access the uh, the SD card. It's very annoying to get it out compared to this one where the SD card slot actually is like uh, loaded in like spring loaded where it comes out and in. I actually very much prefer this because if you have like an enclosure, you can have this be like just hidden out of sight and you can just pop it up and then grab it. That's perfect. But with this one, you actually need to leave yourself enough space to like grab it and pull it out. It's very fiddly and annoying. I don't like it. I really wish they just went with a uh, with a big one like this. But I get it, it probably costs them a fraction less to actually uh, assemble it and stuff like that. And that's pretty much where the comparison ends. Uh, I will say this camera module does have a separate programming board. So for you to actually connect this to a computer and program it, you need to plug this in. Uh, make sure it's running properly and everything and then you can disconnect it and actually use it in this uh, slightly smaller form factor which is nice uh, but I, I I do a lot of hot fixes to my code so having to like remove it from whatever enclosure I put it in and having to put that in there and all that uh, I usually just end up using this as a whole unit and just plugging in whenever I need to so that's a thing uh, and like I said this has a, a nice little microphone there it has an I2C light sensor it has a pinout for RX and TX, a USB-C port, and it uses the newer 
ESP32S3 module compared to what I believe is an ESP32S module here. And I'm sure there's a lot of differences between these two, but uh, I'm not qualified to tell you about those. All I can tell you is that S3 is faster and newer and apparently it has some AI speedification features that I don't know how to use. Uh, so let's go into the software comparison. I have the two cameras in front of me and I'm going to set up the regular ESP32 camera with the web server. So in your Arduino IDE, first of all, make sure that you have your ESP32 uh, board library installed. And then we can go into examples and ESP32. And then down here we have camera and uh, camera web server. We're going to open that up. We can close up the empty one. And right here, so first of all, we need to select the board we're using, which I've not actually plugged mine in, which is why it's not detecting a port if I plug that in. Here, we need to pick the camera we have, which in my case is the AI Thinker ESP32 camera. And here we have to quickly just comment out this one and go down to the camera model we have, which is this one. And the last thing we have to do in here is just fill in the uh, Wi-Fi information. So let me grab that. Okay, now that that's in there, we can uh, upload the script. And whilst that's happening, we can open up another example ESP32 camera web server, like so. And then we can go to the uh, product page for the uh, ESP32 AI camera module, scroll all the way down to the wiki page. And down here, the F robot has an example. Where is it? Right here. So, uh, is this? Wow, I really don't like DF Robot's new website. I'm sure they spend a lot of money on it, but God, is it bad. So here, it takes you step by steps for what we already did. Open the web server, copy this code, and uh, basically just replace everything in here with that code, like so. And now I'm gonna plug in my ESP32 camera module, and it should pop up here and we'll change it to be the correct module, which is the ESP32S3. S3 module. Now with the uh, regular camera module, it should automatically just show you the uh, IP. Unless it, oh, there we go, it's connecting. There we go. So we have the IP to connect to this one. Uh, with the DF Robot one, uh, first of all, make sure you've enabled US, uh, CDC USB on boot because otherwise it won't print you the IP in the terminal. So let's upload that. And meanwhile, we can head over to this. And this should be the ESP32 camera module. So if I just get a screenshot, oh look, it's me. And if I point out this one, we know it's this one. Fantastic. Right. I'm going to wait for the uh, other one to do the thing and then we'll compare them. Okay. The code is uploaded. Let's head over to the terminal, grab the IP and paste that in. And now we have both the cameras. And just to confirm this one. Huh? That was weird. Why is it delayed like that? What on earth? Okay, what if I stream? Okay, stream is fine. So it's just the image capture that's funky. Interesting. Okay, let's compare the two side by side. So if I click uh, stream and stream, Okay, well that looks pretty much exactly the same. Let's try 800 by 600. Uh, right, so that's very interesting. So this is the DF robot one. Oh, this one's just froze. Right. To be fair, I've never actually found the ESP32 cameras to be reliable in any sense of the word. It, the experience is usually something along these lines. Why is this not working? 
Okay, so... The older one is faster until it isn't. Oh, it boot loops. Let's try 680 by 480. Start stream. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if I get this one down a level too. Okay. And again, this one broke. Did it boot loop again? It did. Okay, interesting. Well, on the plus side, the DF Robot one's still going. So uh, let's play around with how high of a resolution we can go up to. Let's try 720p. Ooh, what the heck? Okay. Right, it's definitely slower. I... I'd say this is more like security camera footage, but then that feels actually too slow. I think if I was to use this as something like a security camera, maybe maybe a step lower. Mm, no, that still seems very laggy. Let's try Kif. How's Kif? Okay, Kif is Kif is actually pretty smooth. That's not too bad. Try it slightly higher. Okay, not too bad. VGA. Okay, VGA is starting to get a tiny bit laggy, but okay, if I was making this into a security camera, I'd probably go with VGA because that seems pretty smooth and you get, you know, pretty decent resolution. Can it actually stream at the highest resolution? I think it registered the change, but I don't think it understood the change. Okay, can we stream at 1080p? Okay. The answer is yes, but very slowly. Maybe if I needed to make like a time lapse or something, this would be it. LED intensity. How do I know? I can never tell. I don't think I don't think that turns the LEDs on. Are they defined in the code? Hold on. Okay, so the only reference to the uh, LED GPIO pin is here and it should be defined in the camera pins which we are not actually using because uh, it's got its own camera pin definitions. So no, you can't control the LEDs in the code that DF Robot provides you with. Looking at the schematic, I'm actually even more confused. So they have the, the schematic for the LED thing, which has its own driver thing, which is controlled by PWM on uh, what seems to be a pin, what is this, 37. But then in their own documentation, it's the IR pins are 47. I'm consistently amazed at DF Robot's documentation, not in a good way. Right, let's let's play around with some of the other scripts before I give up. So the other test script they have on here is this audio recorder, so let's try that. Right, so on restart it starts recording for five seconds and then immediately plays it back. Okay, let's try that. Hello, how are you? Oh, that is very quiet. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Okay, can we make that louder? I don't see volume defined here well that's not a good sign okay well I guess that is as loud as it gets oh boy right what other test scripts do they have on here open AI image Q&A right so again this doesn't do any like local AI stuff it just you need an open AI API key and then it just sends the image to OpenAI and then that returns a response. Okay, I don't want to do that because that's pointless. Um, OpenCV on PC. Again, this isn't AI on the actual module itself. This is just using the camera as a camera. 
and just running AI on your computer. I can just do this with a regular webcam, which I can buy for like, I don't know, £1.50 in a charity shop. And it would probably look better than this. I think Edge Pulse does actually do some image recognition on device, which is good. Um, I don't want to play around with it today. Um, join me on next week's live stream where I'll actually try to implement this into something somewhat useful. Okay, they actually have a tutorial on how to use it with Home Assistant. That's pretty neat. Okay, that's pretty cool, the fact that they have a script for this right off the bat. The only thing it actually sends through to Home Assistant is the video. It doesn't, you know, give you like audio or anything like that. So that's a little disappointing. Okay, what else do they have? The last thing on here is just the uh, light sensor. Let's try that. Please tell me it's in the Arduino library manager. It is an... Mm. Extract into my Arduino library folder. So now let's grab that example code, paste it in here and upload. The F robot is actually just so, so good at documentation and code. Let's open the uh, serial monitor. Oh, look at that. We actually have some results. Does it work? It does. Look at that. Okay, cool. The F robot just really needs some quality control sometimes. Okay, let's cut to a conclusion. Right, so my thoughts on this camera are very mixed. First of all, it's got AI in the name, which is just there to be a buzzword. It's altogether a pretty decent package. I like the fact it has the uh, the built-in power supply regulator stuff. So like you can just power it off of any power supply you have lying around pretty much. But like, I would probably be happier buying an ESP32 S3 camera module without any of the additional stuff and just putting whatever stuff I want onto it with the exposed GPI opens because I don't really need the light sensor. The speaker's a nice touch, but I can't actually use it for the project I wanted to use it for because, well, the speaker's too quiet, but besides that, it doesn't actually have enough processing power to stream video and audio at the same time. So there goes my doorbell idea. Um, it just kind of is. If I wanted to use it as something like a, uh, a security camera thing, well, why would I buy this just to stream video if this is cheaper and it can do the same thing? Like, I don't see too much of an advantage. But maybe that's just me. Let me know what you think. And I'll, um, I'll see you on next week's live stream where I actually try to make AI work on these cameras. So I'll see you there. Bye bye. That was the most awkward ending I've done yet. No, it wasn't. It felt it. No, it sure wasn't. It felt awkward.